I have a data set here where people have registered time and they've either worked on phone repairs or PC repairs and they've worked on two different days. And for clarity's sake, I've decided that people who worked zero hours would also add a row, but in reality they would. What I want to do is to create a table in Power BI. I only want to show those workers who have worked above a certain threshold. In this example here, it would be seven hours. So people who worked over seven hours in the selected date period, meaning when I haven't applied a filter, I want this to be nine and show these nine rows. When I then apply a filter on the 1st of January, I only want these two rows. And when I apply a filter on the 2nd of January, it would show four rows. And then I would want to have a count. All I've done in Power BI is to load the actual table and then change type. And then I've added a calendar table using Auto Calendar and then added the relevant extra information. And then I've created a relationship between the two. So the general idea is that I want to see well, how many hours have people worked, but I don't want the sum of hours, only hours on phone repair in this case. And then I want to be able to have a slicer here where I can say I only want to look at certain days, which should uh, not be that one, it should be that, which again, right now it's uh, not going to do what I want because I haven't added anything. So this is simply recreating it in Power BI. And I could add a measure here to say, well, and to give an idea of what I'm going to do, I want to create a calculated table because I think that helps with explaining and visualizing the process, which is under here. And I want to start out by doing it wrong. So I want to say that this should be equal then to summarize my TBL time. And I want to summarize based on persons because I'll be adding the day from my filter context inside the visual. And then I want to add a column, but of course we shouldn't add columns via summarize. We should do it via add columns. So I first need to go back and actually add a measure that will sum up the sum of hours. And first I want this to be all. So that's simply summing up the hours worked. And then I can add another measure, which is only sum of phone repairs, which is then simply calculate my original measure where I want to add a filter that is saying that assignment must be equal to phone repair. And I could also add phone repair as a slicer inside of my visual, or I could add it as a filter on this page. I'm choosing to do it this way to show the principle, but those are other methods you could use. In this case, I only want the page to work on phone repair. So I think it makes more sense to have a mesh doing that, but you could add the page filter. So going back to the all hours worked, I wanted to add a column onto this, which would then be sum of hours. And then I'm using my measure which means I don't have to worry about wrapping it in calculate. And again, this is then 10 and a half. This is all hours work. So if I change that to phone repair, here I do want to use measures just to make it more visual. So I can start out by saying I want to create a variable, which is only phone repairs. So this isn't add column summarize. This is instead filtered version of T build time, where I only include those rows where assignment is equal to phone repair. And I forgot a parenthesis. So this is the actual table that I want to summarize, which I'm just going to call ABC. <laughs> so I want to summarize my only phone repairs based on person. And then again, I want to add a column to that, which is then sum of hours. And what you'll see is that these give the same results because even though I've applied a filter to TBL time, and that's the version of the TBL time that I'm grouping, it's still going to be annoying and actually remove the filter context. So all summarize is doing is then saying, well, I want to look at these people. So if I had a person without any time registration and phone repairs, it might work. But that's why I wanted this extra measure, which only looks at phone repairs, which is then correct. And I then want to exclude this J person because they worked fewer than seven hours, but I'll be doing that in the actual measure, which means I can now go back to my page and this no longer matters, but I can go over here and say, I want to take the person. And then I want to say the sum of hours. And again, I want to then exclude J. But if I then add my filter here, because I also want this to respect my filter coming in from this slicer. So if I select one, I only want to see these two rows. So I want to add a measure, which only includes the row that is the person if they work more than some amount of hours. I start out with a measure that should be minimum hours work. And this is simply so I can reference it in case I need to use this multiple times. And then I can add the real measure. And I don't need to create a variable that simply references this measure, but I think this makes more sense with the, the way I think at least. 
which you've seen in when I use queries where I reference another query, I add that as a step instead, which I don't have to do. But I can then copy paste this and say only phone repairs, which is still a filtered version of key build time. I only look at phone repairs and then I should make this more descriptive. And then lastly, I do want one more. I now need to apply a filter upon this table, which is exactly that. So filter grouped hours worked. I only want those rows where sum of hours greater than or equal to min hours work. And this will then return a table, but because I'm adding it to a table here so that the person column will be filtering these tables and they will be filtering only on person A. So I will end up with a single value, but I need to convert that single value into a scalar value. And actually, I just want to see if I actually have to do this or not. If it understands that, well, in this case, I'm getting a one column, one row table. Yeah, it's uh, it doesn't want me to do that. But that's fine. But that's also because I have multiple columns. So I just want to see if this works. Because now I'm curious. I only want to look at the my column, which I named sum of hours, if it understands that. No. Nope. Then I can just use max x, which will give me exactly one column. But that's fine. I just wanted to check it. And here it does understand that person J should not be included. And for the filter on the 1st of January, I only get these two. So when I remove the original measure, I will only get two rows and I can then copy paste this code because I also want a card that just counts the number of people. So I can copy this and then add a new measure, which is then going to be count rows. And then I can just copy the same thing. The only difference is that instead of using max X, I want to use count rows. And then of course I don't need to specify the column. And then I can add this and turn that into a card. So in this case, it's two. Now it's four. Now it's nine. It turns out that it's actually massively overkill to use summarize in order to solve this problem. I can actually use a basic if statement. So here I'm saying if the sum of hours phone repairs, in other words, this column, if that's equal to or greater than the min hours work measure, then I want to print sum of hours phone repairs. And in case this condition isn't met, I want to just produce a blank result. And I don't strictly speaking need to add this, but I'm adding it for clarity. And as you'll see, I also get a blank row here as I expected from the summarize measure. And when I then remove this original sum of hours work, then the table will be filtered. And it does exactly what I expect. And it's far simpler and probably a lot easier to calculate compared to doing all of this. Sometimes it's good to see that there are multiple methods. And if you can use a basic if sentence, you definitely should. So that was everything. Yep.